Well, hello, fifth grade. Welcome back to our project-based learning. This week, we are continue our work on our virtual Rube Goldberg machine to create a scratch program that simulates a virtual Rube Goldberg machine. We are going to enter into our five weeks of programming each of the individual stages of our scratch program. So what that's going to look like is I'm going to go through and give you some ideas about how you could code it and some different things, but don't feel like you have to do exactly what I do. You can do something different. You could do something similar. You could relate it. It's up to you. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. The first thing I'm going to do is start with a blank scratch project. I'm going to delete the cat. Now I'm going to create a ball. I'm going to do that by doing a new paint object. I'm going to get a blank costume. Then I'm going to click on the circle, choose what color I want, and then draw it. Now you, you want to try to get it as close to ball shape as you can. It may not be perfect. But then we're going to move it around and we're going to make sure that the center is on these cross marks. So that way when we position everything, everything is positioned based upon the center of the sprite. So the next step is to take our sprite and put it to where we want it to start on the screen. And we'll get these numbers down here. Now, you don't have to remember the numbers because Scratch is going to remember the numbers for you. When we go to events and hit when green flag clicked and we look at motion, you'll notice that the numbers that are stored in our X and Y position are the numbers that are already down here. So I'm going to put that there. Next thing, I want to create some kind of obstacle. So whatever your first obstacle is, whether it's a ramp or it's a gear or it's some type of pulley system, you're going to create that obstacle. I'm going to start with a gear. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint another sprite. And a gear to me is going to look like a ball, but I'm going to change the fill from blue to black so we don't get confused. There we go. So I've got a black ball here. I'm going to position it a little bit lower. Then I want to put some teeth on it, but I'm not sure exactly where to put the teeth on yet because I don't know when it's turning how it's going to line up with the ball. So before I go through all the work of putting some teeth on, what I'm going to do is just put a little red dot somewhere on this. And you can see the red dot shows up on the little ball. I might want to make it a little bit bigger for you guys so you guys can see. But that's just for the video. You don't have to make it that big. So there's my red dot. You guys can see that. Now I'm going to go into the code and I want to get my gear to turn. So I'm going to have them start again when green flag clicked. And I'm going to go to a forever loop because I want it to keep turning. And I want it to turn, let's start with 15 degrees. Now I might change that as I try to line the two objects up, but we're going to start with 15 degrees. So when I hit green flag, I can see that my gear is now turning. Now it's a little wobbly, I guess, because I didn't make it a perfect circle, but I think that's okay. So now this is the tricky part. I want to get this ball to this gear. So fortunately for me, Scratch has this ability that when I move the ball to the gear, it keeps track of the exact number that I want. So I want to be careful. I want it to just touch the ball and the gear. And I'm going to use the glide to with a certain amount of time as my next block. So when I do that, ah, it looks like it glides in and touches the gear. Now, if I have to speed things up or slow things down, I can change this number so it happens faster or slower. Now, the only other issue is my gear. Depending on where I stop it, it starts from that spot. 
which is going to change how it hits the ball. So I want to make sure my gear starts in the same direction every time. So I'm going to use this point in direction and choose a direction for it to point in. So that way when I hit green flag, it always starts in the same spot. See, watch that? Always starts in the same spot. So now I can see. So it looks like it's a little bit behind. So I might want to change my angle or I could change my speed. Still a little bit off. Better. Okay, so I'm gonna mess with this for a minute, see if I can get it perfect. So after a couple tries, I think maybe this angle right here, negative 60, seems to work okay. Not too bad. If you want to mess with it and get it better, you can. But I think this is good enough for my demonstration here. So I'm going to go to my costumes now. And remember, this is the red dot where I believe it's hitting the gear. So I can now change this red dot to be something to capture the ball. So I'm going to do a little eraser here. And I'm just going to make a cup in my gear to kind of sort of capture the ball. And let's see. There we go. Now I want my ball to move a little bit further to the cup. So that way it's actually inside of the cup. So I'm going to go back to my ball and look at my code. I want to move this instead of to negative 112. Let's see if I can get it to stop right where I want it. Let me do it again. Stop. Okay, instead of being at negative 112, what I really want it to be is more like that. So I'm going to switch out this for this. Or I could type the numbers in, but I think this will work. So let's try that. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so it looks like it gets caught by the cup, or at least I think it does. So now what I want it to do next is I want it to fly off to the other side of the screen. So I'm going to take the ball. Again, I'm going to move it way over here. I'm going to look at my number. See if I can get it as far over as I can. So it looks like it's flying off the screen. So now I'm going to have a glide again using my gliding block. And look, it copied the numbers for me. And this time I'm going to do it really fast. So let's say 0.12 of a second. Let's see how that looks. I think that's pretty good. So now I have my spinning gear and it throws my ball off the screen. So using these glide features allows you to help in your animation process of your gears and your balls as they're moving through your Rube Goldberg machine. So now uh, we've gone through the whole process. You go ahead and give it a try. See what you can come up with. I look forward to seeing it. Catch you next time.